hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel this is your first most subscribe please please do not forget to hit that subscription button and also the notification button to be notified each time i drop a new video and for those who are coming by this is your first time of stopping and passing by i'm called Benis. i'm a cameroon by nationality but i'm based in uae so um today our topic will be all about marriage we are still talking about marriage we have so many topics on marriage so i want to share with you guys the kind of man you should not marry the kind of man you should not temper to go into with him for marriage so i will give us i have some few points that i want us to talk on i have about seven points that i'm going to be sharing with you guys and i know it's going to be helpful and it's something that we are going to learn and give our own contribution in the comment section so let's begin with our topic the kind of man you should not marry number one do not marry him if he is blind i said do not marry him if he is blind do not marry him if he has no vision when when you say a man is blind that means he has no vision he has no ambition towards the future of his family towards the future of you and towards the future of him and his family that means that means his wife and children do not marry him if he is blind if he has no vision and the bible says two cannot work together unless they agree so you have to you have to make up your mind the bible says the two of you cannot work together unless you agree what are the things that you guys are agreeing together what are the things that you guys have come together and say this is how i want my my fa my, my future should be like this is how i want my family do you guys need to agree there are things that you guys need to agree before the both of you can work together so you need to to put it down note it down that we have to agree on this and that and that so when we are married there are things that we will not argue because there are things that we are not going to argue uh, to do it because we have already agreed on how our marriage should look like on how we are going to live on how our future should be based on so you guys need to agree if you don't have that agreement you guys should not get married you guys need to work in one agreement and if he is telling you to join him in the journey of life and he does not have vision what is the point if he's telling you that you need to join him in the fish in his in his journey of life that means if you get married to him you are obviously you, you you're, you're clicking with him you guys are clicking together and that means you're joining him in the in his vision of life in his journey of life that means you, you're going to support his dream you're going to support his vision if telling if he is telling you to join him in his journey of life and he does not have vision he does not have a dream he does not he is not thinking towards of future there is no point of there is no point joining him because he does not have a vision he does not have a dream so that's number one point and i'll go to number two point do not marry him do not marry a man who cannot see you for who you can become do not marry that man that cannot see you for who you can become for who you can become that that means that man that cannot push you to your dreams, that cannot push you to your vision, that cannot give you that encouraging word for you to become who you have to be. To that cannot encourage you for you to pick for you to, to continue to pursue your dreams and career. Do not marry that type of person that is willing to that is willing to break you down, that is willing to, to make sure you your dreams does not go through, your dream, your dreams end in the marriage. No. Marry that person that is going to encourage you, that is going to push you to your dream, that is going to make your dreams come to pass, that is going to make your vision a reality. Yes, that's the type of person that you need to marry. Person that is going to encourage you. That is going to encourage you. And that person that is going to stand by you and beside you. That person that is going to stand by you and beside you is going is always he's always there to encourage you. He's always he's always stand by to put to push you forward, to push you to your dream, to push you to your vision of life. So that is the type of people that we need to marry. If that person is not encouraging for you to, to, to for you in your visions, in your career, in your ambition in life, in life, please 
don't marry that person because your life is going to end only as a housewife because he will not encourage you for you to uh, pursue your career and uh, your dreams will not come to pass so number three point don't marry him if he is insecure and jealous don't marry a man don't marry a man that he is insecure and jealous the bible the bible bible says we should rise and shine for your light has for your light has for your light has come and the glory of the lord rises upon you that is Isaiah Isaiah 60 verse 1 the bible says we should rise and shine for our light has come the glory the, the glory of the lord has risen upon us upon you that is an Isaiah 60 verses 1 so we should arise and shine don't marry that man that's going to dim your light don't marry that that jealous man that man when you marry someone that is jealous it's going to dim your light your light is not going to shine that person that you, you are very uncomfortable you can't share your victory with the person you can't share your success with the person if you're going if you if you if you're succeeding the person is angry in his spirit don't marry that type of person that uh, does not like to see you succeed that does not want to see you happy you should be with a man that 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 he can be happy seeing you progress or you're seeing you progress or seeing you succeed in life a person that you will be scared don't marry a person that you will be scared to share your success with him you need that man who will always be happy for you for you marry that person that is going to celebrate your success with you that is always that will be very happy you know some people are even happier they are, they are even happier than you that is that is uh that is celebrating so marry that person that will always be there to celebrate your success that will be happy for you to succeed and also that should not make you being disrespectful because you're succeeding and he's is there you're, you're 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 successful than him so that should not make you being disrespectful and obedient to, towards your partner or towards your husband so that is that is number three point that should not make you being disrespectful because you are a, a successful you are successful more than your partner number four point i would say don't marry him if he is a mommy's boy this one is very 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 important and this is the this is my favorite right you should not marry a man that is a mommy's boy that man that is a mommy's boy anything mommy 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 that man if you if you're with somebody that say that call his mother mommy run away from that person because that person is still a mommy's boy that person is still a mommy's boy run run away from that person and that person that says mommy says mommy says i should not do this mommy says i should do this mommy says mommy says run away from that person because that person is still a mommy's boy we call that person man child he's still a man child he's not yet a man he's still a man child he's still under his mother because the bible says you shall you should you shall you should leave your father and your mother and cling to your wife that will make you a man a man he said a man should a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. He did not say a boy. So you should not marry a mommy's boy. Run if the man says, I have to ask or consult mommy. <laughs> if, if, your, if your man says he needs to ask or consult his mother before taking a decision, before making a decision, or before approving what you guys have discussed, my dear, my dear, you need to run. You need to run with full speed because anything, anything you guys discuss in the house, your mother, his mother will know about it. Any discussion, any decision he wants to take, his mother will, he, his mother will be the one to permit him to do this and do that, and that will actually mean his mother is going to be the one that was going to run your home. His mother will be the one to run your home. His mother is going to be the one to give you instructions on what to do and what to that, uh, what not to do one not to know for the bible says for the for 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 this reason a man a man not a man not a boy you understand the bible says for this reason a man not a boy a man not a boy will leave his mother and his father and be united or clip to 
his wife. That is in Mark, Mark 10 verses 9. But for the reason for the Bible says a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave or unite with his wife. He did not say a boy, he said a man. So men do get married, not boys. Boys are those ones that listen to their mother. That if mommy, mommy must be the one to tell him, hey, do this. Mommy must be the one to say, okay, accept this. Mommy must be the one to, to agree in that decision that they are making in their home, in their marriage. Without the, decision, without the opinion of the mother, nothing can happen. That is mommy's boy. And that is not good for a marriage. That is not good for a home. You have already left your father and your mother. Now you are building your own family. Your mother and no, your father do not have to interfere in your marriage, in your marriage decision. You are the one to make decision. You and your wife. You are the ones to make decision without the interference of your mother or your father. Same as the wife. Without the interference of the mother and the father too for, from the wife's side. It is not in the it's not in one side, the both side. The mother and the father do not have to intervene in your marriage decision, in your decision in your family. That is your family. Your parents are no longer your family. That are that are your extended family, but your immediate family is your wife and your children. You are to make decision. Not everything you run to your mother, not every mommy's boy, mommy's boy. You don't take decision in your home with your family. You have to ask permission from your mother. That's mommy's boy. And you're leading a bad foundation in your marriage. You're leading a bad foundation in your marriage. And I am not saying you should. You should, I'm not saying you should marry a man that disrespects the mother or the family members. No. There are limits to everything. There are boundaries. And that man needs to, the, the man needs to say, the man needs to set a limit between the, the, the mother in his home. Between the mother and his wife, he needs to set a limit. There's a limit to everything. You can't allow your mother to come to your house and start dictating for uh, dictating to your wife for what she she needs to do for what she needs to cook and you tell and your mother will dictate for your wife that if you do like this my, I will tell my child not to eat the food if you cook this food like this my child will not eat the food or if you do this and your mother will come to your home and dictate for your wife and start giving rules and instructions in someone's home no it is not done like that and you just sit, sit there, you fold your hands and do nothing. That is not how it is done. It is her home. It is your wife's home. So she has the right to determine what is going to happen and what is not going to happen in her home. Because it is her home. It is her own foundation that she is building. It is her marriage that she needs to build. Not her, not her uh, husband mother that needs to come and tell her what to do. Same goes to the wife. Not the wife mother needs to tell the husband what to do in her home. Not the wife mother needs to run the home for her. No. No. The mother, the, 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 the husband's mother has no right to come and dictate and say, no, you need to be do like this. Don't, don't do like this. Do like this. If you don't do like this, I'll tell my child, I'll tell my son not to do this. I'll tell my son. No. And when, and when you're having a discussion with your, with your wife, your mother, his mother has no right to pop into the conversation. He has no right because it is it is it is their marriage. It is their marriage discussion. It is their decision. They have to make a decision as a couple without any interference from the mother, from the father, from the husband's side, being the mother of the wife's side as well. So do not marry a mommy's boy. Like you're going to regret this. You are going to regret it. But if he is the if he, if he but if he is the kind of person that does not make decision on his own, if he is the kind of person that is that is easily influenced by his mother and family, if he is the kind of person that does not make decision and stick to it, he is not a kind of man you should marry. That kind of man that he cannot make decision and stick to it. Like you make a decision, you guys are going to, you guys will talk on something today. Tomorrow he changes it because he has gone to consult his mother. He has gone to ask advice from his mother. He has gone to ask his mother opinion on that on the discussion. And the mother is going to give him another opinion. And he's going to come back and change everything that you guys have talked and conclude on. 
that man that cannot make a decision and stick on it, that man that is easily convinced, influenced, influenced to, from uh, from his mother, that man that can easy, his mother can easily convince, that man that his mother can easily con, uh, influence to change his decision, to change his opinion on 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 the things that he has he has on the on the things that he has discussed and conclude with his wife. That is mom. That is a mommy's boy. Do not marry a mommy's boy. Do not marry a mommy's boy. Do not. So that is it for that. Do not marry a mommy's boy. A man that cannot make a decision. A man that cannot stand on his words. A man that everything he needs to consult his mother before taking any decision in their own. No, that is a big no for me. Do not marry a mommy's boy. Number five. Do not. Marry a man who is hot tempered. Yes. Do not marry a man who is hot tempered. That is a man who has anger. Cause that anger that causes violence. That might cause violence. That might lead to domestic violence because the because the Bible says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. That is Ephesians 4, 26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let your... Do not sin. Do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Because during the process of him being angry, he might, he might hit you. And that might lead to domestic violence. And the Bible also make it clear that in, in, in your anger, do not sin. That do not sin, that means, that do not sin means do not do things that are going to lead you to sin. Being hitting your wife, abusing your wife, that leads to domestic violence. It leads to domestic violence. So in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. In Ephesians 4.26, go and read it. Ephesians 4 26 and the Bible also says to the Bible also say be not hasty in this spirit to be angry for anger wrestle in the bosom of fools Ecclesiastes 7 9 Ecclesiastes 7 verses 9 in your anger the Bible also says be not Ecclesiastes 7 verses 9 be not hasty in this spirit to be angry for anger wrestle in the bosom of fools. Angers are for fools. Do not be angry. You don't need you, you there are ways that you can work on your anger. There are ways that you can work on it. You can go for counseling. You can go for counseling. They are going to cancel you and you're going to your anger are going to subside. When you, you read Bibles and do so many thick classes that can easily calm down your anger. That, that that can that you can live without being angry. That kind of anger that when it occurs, when it happens, you break things, you hit people, you abuse people. That is a very very bad thing that we need to work on before getting married. If your man is like this, you need to you need to advise him to work on his anger, to take anger classes. Because the Bible also makes us to understand that we should not sin while you're angry. We should not sin when we are angry. So that is number five points. So I will take number six point. Don't marry a man who is in who is stingy. Don't marry a man who is stingy. Yes. You should not marry that man who is very stingy. Stingy Coco. No, don't marry that person. No, 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 no. That person that I'm not saying women should not work. No, women should work. Women should be able to work and back up their husband to support their husband in times of needs and some certain things. Yeah, it, it should not be only that stinginess is not only about money, being stingy with money, being stingy with your uh, your resources and what. No. A man is very stingy, like you can do your hair, you can buy a new dress, and he will be, he will be very unable to appreciate it. Like you see you, you make a new hair and he comes back, he, he comes, he, he's, he comes back home and sees the hair, he cannot appreciate it and say, No, honey, you look good, your hair is nice, you look you look beautiful, you look lovely. No, he can't appreciate you. Do not marry that. He's been stingy. 
He's been stingy with his words. He's been stingy with his appreciation. He can't appreciate you. That's stinginess as well. That man that cannot appreciate his woman, that cannot appreciate his wife, it's being, he's being stingy. The kind of person that cannot compliment, he cannot compliment you. I just said it before, he cannot compliment you, he cannot appreciate you, he cannot just... He cannot put himself to appreciate and compliment your dressing, your your good, your looks, what you do, and say no, you prepared this food. It, this food was delicious. You made it nice. I love the food. I love everything, every bit of everything you put in it. So that man that you need to marry that man that is complimentary, that can compliment you in everything you do. He encourages encourages you so that you can do more. He compliments you for you to do more. And he does not praise you as well. You need to marry that person that praises you. You know, women love praises. We love pampas. We love when a man praises us, appreciate us. And like, just know you look good. You look so good. You, your hair is nice. Your dress is nice. The food was nice. I love it. We like, we love appreciation, we love praises, we love pampas, we love all those things that makes us feel good. So it's always good to marry a person that appreciates and praises you as a woman, as his wife. Even if you don't need his money, you need to know that they, you need to know that there is someone that has my back. You need to know there is someone that has your back. So even if you don't need money, that's what I'm saying. Don't marry a stingy man. Even if you don't need money, you are working, yes. But you just need to be sick. You just need to know that there is somebody, in case of anything, there is someone that you can easily run to. There, so, there is someone that is always beside you, that is standing by you in case you are in need. You just need you just need that assurance. You just need that assurance that you have someone that is that is caring. You don't have someone that can give you in case you are in need of something in money being resources everything that he owns you know that you have someone that is there beside you behind you to assist you that's very very important you should not marry a stingy man and as well as your family members that person that he can your family can be having some challenges and call upon him he say no have this have that to solve the problem but that person that stingy coco that real stingy man that you call and say eh what did the doctor say you both should try you both should try i don't have now i don't have this i don't have that no i cannot i don't have this one i cannot do it no marry that someone that is old that will be there to support you that will be there in times of trouble in times of your needs even your family that he can assist them. Marry the person that has open hands. Have open hands towards your family, towards you and your children as well. Because there are people that are very stingy even to themselves. They are stingy even to themselves. To eat is a trouble. To eat is a problem. They can't remove their money to buy something that they will, they will love to eat. They, they rather stay hungry. <laughs> they rather drink gary and go to bed. So, marry someone that is not stingy. Don't marry the person that is stingy. So, number seven points. Don't marry him if he is unfaithful. Yes. This is very, very important. Do not marry that man. That is unfaithful. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. Do not marry that man that is unfaithful that you are planning to get married to. Don't marry him. Because marriage does not change anything. If you are married, if you are married, a man, if you are married to a man that you know is cheating on you, he will not change. He will not change. You have already, you have getting married to him, he has getting married to him. You have getting married to him. Why you people are dating and you think well and why you people are dating and you realize that this man is cheating on you? That is a time for you to take a step back. That is a time for you to run. That is a time for you to put an end to the relationship. Because if you're putting it in your mind that ah, if I get married to him, I will change him. If I get married to him, he's going to change. He's going to be faithful. He's going to be truthful. He's not going to cheat. He's not going to lie. He's not going to know. You're making a fool out of yourself. You're making a big fool out of yourself. Because marriage, marriage will not change that person. Marriage will not make him to stop cheating. Marriage will not make him to stop lying. Marriage will not make him to stop flirting around. 
No, he will still be doing what he will be doing. Yes, if you're saying, and he was cheating, we, he had many girlfriends, but he chose me. He chose me out of how many he was cheating with me for. No, you are putting yourself into trouble because you're, you're opening yourself for AIDS, for sick, for diseases, sexual diseases, because he's going to carry it from those people and come and give it to you. That will, marriage, will, marriage will not change him for, for anything that is good. He will not change. He will still be that person that he is. Unless he is rooted in Christ. Unless he, he has, he has like, I will say, he has rendered his life for Jesus. He has rendered his life for, for God. He has, he has been now, he has been a new person. He has been rooted in Christ. That, that's the only thing that marriage can change him. And once you are married, you are married. You won't say, eh, let me just go back and say, let me check, I will come back. No. The only thing that can change him now is prayers. If only, the only thing that you'll be doing now, you will only to pray. You will only to pray because nothing can, nothing can change him again. The time has passed. You knew that he was this type of person. You know he was a cheating man. You know, you knew he was a cheating boyfriend, but you decided in your own in your own good time, you decided to marry him. You decided to take the next step with him. You, you decided for you guys to be a couple. So you have to bear the consequences. Yes, because the best time for you to make a decision is where you guys are still dating. And you realize he is this type of person. You need to take a walk. A big walk behind. Because once you have jumped into marriage, that is it. It's finished. It's finished. There's no turning back. You will be there. It is it is where you have chosen to be. So you will be there. No time for regrets because it's it's too late for you to start thinking. Uh, if if I knew, if I knew it's too late. The time has long passed. Has long gone. Before you want to realize you guys are still having kids. So what are you saying? It's 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 too late for you to to start regretting. No, that that's too late for you to regret. Because when you want, when, when you were to do something, you stood there and you say, no, he will change. Change? How come? How come? How will he change? Somebody that you knew, you know quite all right that this is his way. This is his way. When you guys were dating, he was doing like this. He was doing like that. But you still stood there and said, ah, I must marry this man. I'll marry him, then I'll change him. Ah, sister, you lie. You lie yourself because it's very, very, it's slightly impossible for him to change unless he is rooted with God. He's rooted, rooted in God. So that is it. That is number seven for you. Do not marry him if he is unfaithful. So number eight, do not marry him if he is unruly. Do not marry that man if you know he's unruly. When you guys are in Relationship, you can you guys cannot make a decision. Your opinion do not count. When you say something, no, it has to be like this. But in my own way, he does not want your opinion to count. He always wants you to listen to him and take his opinion. Don't argue. Don't argue. Do when, when you start seeing those those signs, my sister, no marry him. Do not marry that person. Do not because if you are getting married to him, just be, just know you just be that mumu, you will be that that fool, you will be that uh, fool, a fool, a fool. That's how the Nigeria call it. You will be that a fool, a fool in that marriage because you always want you to listen and don't talk. Always want you to listen and don't give your opinion. Do not count in the relationship. Your opinion do not count in the marriage. When you say go like this, yes. Even if you see you see that there is a snake there that is going to beat you, no, you continue, just be going. Because if you say, no, I cannot go, there is something there that is going to... He will say you must go because he does not want anybody to challenge him. He does not want any opinion apart from his own opinion. He is very unruly. He is ruling. He, do, he wants to be ruling. He wants to be ruling. Everybody should submit. He wants to be ruling. Everybody must obey. He wants to be ruling. Everybody must listen. And obey and follow the instruction without anybody telling no 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 bro this what this thing you did is not correct no no honey this thing you did is not like this you ought to have done it like this no he does not want someone to 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 like say someone to judge his opinion that's what I have to say he doesn't want anybody to judge his opinion his opinions are always finer it's always perfect 
that man that knows he's perfect, he does not make mistakes. That man, that man that knows that ah, no, he's the he's the perfect man. He's a, he's the best. Everything he does is the best. Everything he does, he does it on time, on point. Do not marry that type of man. Do not marry that type of man. That man that does not see you as anything. Do not marry that type of man. Yeah. That, that means your opinion will, ne will never count. Your opinion will never, ever count. Marry that man that will always that will always want you and him to discuss something through and he will consider your opinion and consider his own you guys put it together and walk towards it. Marry your friend. The conclusion to this is the conclusion to this is you should marry your friend. Marry that man that you are you're always secure. Don't marry that man that you're insecure that you can't be you that man that you cannot be around him freely that man that you don't marry a man that you need to before you speak out before you before you say something you need to calculate very well in your brain calculate it very well in your mind before spilling it out you need to calculate the words that you spill don't marry that man that is too serious that man that there is no time for you guys to joke that man that you, there is no time for you guys to clown there is no time to play there is no time to laugh there is no time to for funny there is no time you guys can make jokes out of your words that man that is too serious everything you say he takes to heart everything you say he takes to heart Marry that man that you guys can play, you guys can have fun, you guys can discuss without without any arguments. Sometimes you guys just need to talk and laugh over everything. Over some things, you guys just need to talk and laugh. Not that too serious-minded person. No. At least you guys should have fun as well. Marriage is not all about too seriousness. Marriage is not all about being too serious, being too hard on your partner. No. You guys need to have fun. You guys need to laugh. You guys need to play with each other as well. So, beautiful people, we have come to an end of this lovely topic. So, you should know the type of man that you are going to marry. You should not just marry any kind of man. So, if your man is, is found in between the points that I've made, do not marry that kind of man that you cannot be secure with him. That man that you cannot be happy around him, that he cannot be happy in your success. So you should be able to make a decision now that you are still very free and single, that you are still not yet married. Make a decision while you are still in a relationship. Do not say you will change when it's when you guys are married. Do not say he's going to change. No. Do not say it's going to change. Thank you guys so much for watching this wonderful video. And I also want you guys to comment on the comment section, guys. Tell me, leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video. Share your thoughts on the comment section. Make me, let us have that connection between us on the comment section. Share your thoughts. Tell me what you think about this video. What is your own view? Add your own views on the comment section online. And also share this video to your friends and family. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. And stay blessed. Do have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. See you guys on my next video. Bye.